first sight, just two for Russia. And Mike O'Brien from America will be in charge of this match. Warm conditions, conditions here. The cloud has lifted. And Uganda in their yellow strip. Their away strip. Russia in the blue and red. Uganda will get a chance just to pass the ball around. Casita is their captain. Straight away goes into the contact of Mason. Good lineup down here for the Uganda side. They really did test South Africa. And if South Africa go on to win this tournament, I think that many of them might say it was just the wake up call that they needed because against Uganda, they just beat them by nine points. And South Africa and the rest of the tournament has really dominated and played some fantastic sevens rugby. And it was this type of rugby. That got them close to the top team of 2016. Just their ability to move the ball and then how strong they are in standing and offloading the ball in the contact. Here is Okia, top try scorer for them. He scored five this weekend, looking for number six. The kick and chase, the bounce just beats him. There are plenty of Russian players around too that all swarm to get back good numbers. Will get the reward of a penalty. Yeah. Uganda play high-risk rugby. On average, they're giving the ball away nine times per game, so it, that provides an opportunity for the Russians to pick up a couple of tries in this game. I think it's going to be a close one, Willie. Nikitin is caught, and straight away, Russia want to go on the attack. They may have lost all four games, and only scored two tries over the weekend, but they will be competitive. Will Russia straight into the contact? Goes Filatov. Stays on the deck. Out to their strike weapon. And Babayev got to learn to control the ball there. A little bit better, Mason. Babayev again into the contact. So those unforced errors has been something that's these two sides, and I know it's early in the season too, Mark, so I'm not too critical because I'm sure that the coaches will have a lot to say about this. And there was a stat, an interesting stat, of how much ball Uganda have given away. Yeah, it makes it difficult to win games when you are given possession away so often. They don't have a problem scoring tries, but Cross. when you're giving the ball away so much, Fine. you're going to concede more. Set. Good field position for the Russians to just move it along the chain. The late cut wasn't really on, and Filatov just dropped it cold. And he gives the ball away. Yeah, Filatov, one of their most experienced players. They're looking for him for real leadership. He's a try scorer over the course of the weekend, but they're also missing their talisman from the starting lineup today as, uh, as an Estrushko. He is their main try scorer, their main threat. They really need him for that X factor and to break the line. A lot of these Uganda players come from the Buffaloes Club in Kampala. And so they're familiar with the way that they run the lines, and now they work a nice overlap and get the ball on the outside. Here comes Okia. Okia with a second chance to get inside the Russian half. Throws the ball up. Good lineup. And a number of players out here to the left, but the dummy gets thrown first by Okoroc. Stay strong. Big, strong runner. And now Ojena. The step. Can't get away from... Nick can Leave it. And now they look to try and get the turnover here, Russia. And guilty of going into the contact with Uganda, where maybe the better option would have been to go wide. Yeah, I think so. I'm also surprised. It's an interesting tactic from the Russians. They're playing seven up, but it's paying dividends there. It means they've got men on their feet, and yeah, the sure Ugandans are having to go into contact, and they're losing ball. It's not a strong area for them, but what we will see is when they do a ball, we will see these chips over the top with the pace Fine. they've got to chase them. Set. Whoever you're watching around the world, this is the second game for these two sides. In this heat, after playing three yesterday, they're down to just nine players in their squad. And so, obviously, changes will be made before they head to Cape Town next week. And Russia looking to try and open their account. The ball movement is good yet again. And the tackling from Uganda is on point. Or Jenna goes in. The counter ruck comes in from... Kisita, no knock on there. Ovchiknov is in jersey 13. Just playing in the 
short corridors here in Russia. Offside, the other one. Both teams very static when they're receiving the ball. We really need somebody to spark something in attack. Somebody needs to grip it by the horns and have a real go. We need an individual to spark something. Russia finished 14th in 2016 there. You can see that they were clearly offside. And so the referee says that there's no advantage here. They bring it back to the set piece, the penalty, and they kick. That's a lovely kick. Quality kick to give them good field position here. Yeah, they needed that. Great kick from the Russians. This is an opportunity to go to set piece somewhere where they're strong. Create a bit of space. It's 3v3 in the back line. Let's see if somebody can get a little 1v1 opportunity. That's yeah, something where you were renowned for was good kicks to the sideline. <laughs> yeah, but I was actually trying to keep the big play, unfortunately. <laughs> How tough is it, Mark, in these conditions? Game number five over two days, first tournament of the season. How tough on the body? Yeah, you, you start to struggle for energy. I mean, the toughest game is day one, is, um, is game one of day two, but you get to this stage here, and especially in the lower levels of the competition, you're on low reserves. Well, they look over to the reserves, and there are no reserves. Just two for each side. This is a cross-field kick, maybe a good tactic. Oh, Kia went up. And he's just lost it forward. If he had caught that, he was gone. They're dangerous in the air. Almost got his hands to it there. Just, just knocked it on. But if he'd caught that, he was sailing 80 metres towards the try line. Nice tactic, wasn't it? Identifying where the space was instead of getting it through the hands. The kick pass, as it's called in sevens. Fine. Set. Russia's best result in Sydney last year where they finished eighth and as for Uganda well they won the African Championship to qualify for the World Cup next year in San Francisco and also this tournament and Cape Town you see that start there Willie the fatigue is kicking in for Uganda they've lost the ball nine times on average per game that's in the first half they've given away possession nine times and now Russia go on the attack the numbers were there the ball's been lost forward and now it's been scooped up on Kia who we've been speaking about the referee missed it initially and got the late call from the assistant referee. <laughs> Half time here between Uganda and Russia. It is nil all. Yeah, clearly the knock on there from Okoroch. Look at the big mitt that goes out there. He loses it forward. <laughs> Here's the lovely reaction from his teammates. Okia will be pretty gutted with that, having run 60 metres for no reason whatsoever to be pulled back for that knock-on. That would have been him running for his sixth try too. He's dangerous over the course of the weekend. One of the great game, one of the great things and the point of difference about our game is the fact that our camera crew and sound are able to get in there. Fantastic to share what the coaches and players have to say. The crowd in full voice here. I don't get a chance to say very often, but Russia have only got two subs. Yeah, that's when you look to the bench, you just had a lung busting run. It's not a nice thing to see. Nobody, nobody really to come on for you. I was going to say, your lungs are burning. You look to the bench and. <laughs> Everyone else is looking the other way. The ball gets thrown back, and they'll have to go 80 metres. 
inside their own 22. Who's first to blink? Who's first to make the big mistake? Can they get through? Alexandra Nitkin. A high tackle, and they're going to go on with it here, Russia. I thought they may have tried to play the percentage game of kicking it to the line out, but they want to opt to try and run this Uganda side around. They get the ball out to Kapolin and just touched a foot on the sideline. Like the scrambling defense of Uganda, if we're looking for positives, just the way that they're able to read and push up from the inside out. They've got the benefit of pace. They can use the touchline as that extra defender, Willie. But as a coach, that is one of the most frustrating things to see a winger going to touch. Yeah, that won't please the coach at all. And what it does is it gives possession back to the men in yellow and black, Uganda. The Cranes on the attack through. Okoroch brings in two defenders. Okia collides with his teammate, Ejonga. And when we look at some of those stats that we saw during the halftime huddles, they've given the ball away 11 times and they've made a number of unforced errors and there's another. You've got to merit making the offload and when I say merit making the offload, you have to be in control of that contact situation there. He's gone at the, gone at the contact with the one hand and tried to offload it and it's, it's gone to deck. You need to take care of that golden pill. It's a very, it's, it's precious, you know, and whoever can look after it for the remainder of this game, that'll be the winning team, but... Uh, Russian coach Andrei Sorokin. Fine. Just looking for something special from his players in the next five minutes. Ivan Mochinokov gets it across this time he won't run out because he stayed in field and that ball has gone forward and now here's the first try for uganda james Ejonga here on debut scores his first and he breaks the deadlock that all came from the physicality in the defense that intent to be aggressive and make the hit another loose offload Ejonga, he picks that up with a one mitt there's nobody left to sweep him. He's got it and he touches down. They take the lead. And they will be celebrating at the Cobbs Club in Kampala, where he plays his footy, the young 24-year-old. No bigger stage to score your first try, and that is a moment that he won't forget. Definitely not. You know, if they get this win, Willie, too, it's a, it's a huge achievement for them. Uganda are not a core team. Russia are. That will be the problem for Russia is attaining points or getting points. As we know, 15 core teams in the competition. One will drop out. And in Hong Kong, there will be a qualifying series that will be played as a Russia lift to strike back. Kevin Akuabu, good strength getting inside the 22. Russia with their first real opportunity of the second half. Numbers out to the left. Good transfer, good passes. Mason. Sends it out to now Babayev. Changing on the action. First tackle is missed. Gotsushev goes to deck. Uganda look for the ball and the referee rewards their efforts. Again, great work rate in defense from the Ugandans. It's easy to have the ball and be full of energy, but Okarich there, he works back, he gets his hands on, he's strong over the ball, and he wins a well-deserved penalty for they them. got numbers back, and now they're going to chance their arm from inside their own 22. The step, and then the acceleration, Okia. Five tries will become six. Someone's woken up the cranes in the second half. Plenty of cranes in the skyline of Dubai. There certainly is. Okia, Okia. He is mesmerizing in attack. Seeing the replay here, those little dancing feet. The Russians could not handle it. And he's such a silky runner. He makes it look easy. But it certainly is not. To score six tries in any tournament is an impressive feat for any player. He's top quality. Terrific performance from Uganda in the second half. They had their backs to the wall. First victory for them, and look at that beautiful smile. What a moment for the man who has scored six tries. There's the injured players on the bench, and they knew once he had broken the Russian line that there was no sweeper in behind, and he scampered 90 metres 
to score their second. Deep kick down to where to be taken by Babaev. Babaev gets the shoulder of the Uganda captain, Kasita. How do Russia respond? How much petrol left in the tank? And can they go the distance? Alexandra Nikitin draws in two defenders, holds the ball up, and now just a sweep of the beat. Big tackle again coming in from Kasita. And he's done a mountain of work on defense as the Uganda captain. Russia, Gotushev, gets it one wider to Sergei Meissen. Stay strong, does the number six, just to buy some time, and they get the penalty. Russia need to score twice in the next 60 seconds. Russia looking to score their third try of the weekend. They've got numbers, they just need to go straight here. Akuabu, big and strong, the massive step. And he did the Russian sidestep and tried to go straight, straight ahead. Numbers here. Uganda looking to try and force the error. Russia finally get rewarded with a try. Sergei Meissen, I think he scored it. If he has scored it, it's a very well-deserved try. They walked all the way from inside their 22-meter line there. We'll just listen in to what he has to say to the assistant referee. You saw back there? Yeah, back there, yellow, yellow 10. 10. To tackle, tackle yellow yeah. card. 10 yellow, please. Well, there was a tip tackle from the try scorer, Okia. The try will stand, and Russia will play the rest of the match with just 10, six please. players. Number 10. Come here. Well, number 10 is already walking off. He's been subbed. Back there. Dangerous tackle. Tip. The yellow card. He's gone. And what a great finish here by the Russians. Turn back on, please. Cracking finish. Real determination. And this is going to be an interesting last 30 seconds. You know, they're without their talisman, Solomon, Akia. But as I said, the Russians had to work really hard there. Uganda put them 80 meters back into their own half, and they worked all the way up the pitch and scored that try in the left-hand corner. The most important kickoff of this match now for Russia looking to try and draw level if they can get the kickoff right Uganda will just control the tempo here nothing silly from Uganda they'll just play out the clock they just need to hold on to the ball the counter ruck from Russia is brilliant now a chance hold the phone now go release turnover from Russia a numerical advantage they've got numbers out to the left and they'll look to try and exploit that here no sweeper in behind and there is the try scorer in Saturday. Meissen, straight up the middle. The W and go might work here. But Uganda team are tired. Tackle still being made, four out. Numbers out here. Here comes the second try. Alex Kaplan brings them too closer. Kick to draw level. Kaplan puts it right down to the wire. This is tight. He's got this kick. He's got this kick to get a draw. If it's a draw, it goes to extra time. And remember, Willie, there's only nine fit players per Ruth, team. Please. Time off. So there's not much fuel left on the bench either. Ruth. They're down at dwindling reserves. Time back on. This descended to extra time. What a comeback from Russia in the last 90 seconds of this game. This to draw level. We're going to extra time. <laughs> of steel. Russia won this one. They're not giving it to Uganda easily. <laughs> They've both got nine players only in a squad of 12, and they're going to go to extra times. Great pressure kick. Full time, it's 12 all, but the toss of the coin yet to come. And Uganda will play the first minute and 20 seconds with only six players. Yeah, that's tough. Very, very toss. tough. Especially when you only have two players on the bench. Yeah. Heads. Tails. Yeah, the shield. Yeah. Tails. Flip. Con. Yeah. It's tails. It's tails. No kicker if I'm in. Which side? Which side? 
Well, Mark Robertson, you've been in this situation many occasions in your illustrious career. The lungs are burning. You've got very little reserves on the bench. What do you need to do here? Or what do Russia need to do to actually come away with the win? Exactly. They need to, they need to score, Willie. That's what they need to do. They need to score. <laughs> anyway, drop goal, try, however they can do it, score the first point. Yeah, I gather that. I'm just asking. <laughs> They need, to, they need to focus on their next job. It sounds simple, but it's very easy to, to feel that pain, that lactic acid in your legs, that those lungs going. But what they need to do is, off the kickoff, first and foremost, they need to secure ball and work their way back up the pitch. When you look at the two teams, for me, Uganda look like they've got more energy. They just look a little bit fitter. The Russians also, it's a different style, isn't it? The Russians wanting to play more direct, more into the contact, as opposed to Uganda. We want to try and spread the ball on every occasion. Exactly right. And you know what Uganda are going to do here? They're going to use that South African ploy. They're going to kick it deep into the 22, and they're going to ask Russia to go all the way and score. Well, they're starting with seven players. So it's seven on seven. I thought that one of the Uganda players would have still been in the bin, but that doesn't appear to be the case. And so we'll play on. As Russia get the chance with first possession in this extra time. It's been a long 14 minutes for both of these teams. And Sergei Meissen takes it up towards the 10 meter mark. One error could be costly. One missed tackle will certainly lead to one of these two teams progressing through as Kutyashev with it. A little bit of obstruction, and here they go. This is the speed that I was talking about from the Uganda side. Willing to go into the contact. They don't need to go into the contact because they've certainly got some players that can go 60 metres. First up tackle's been made by Babayev. Big, long pass thrown out from Ofoywoth. And now Ojena runs across, sees a gap. Ojena puts on another right foot step and gets into the backfield. Ojena with the cut. Here come Uganda, players out to the left. Really needed to release that, but they've still got possession. Now they've got some space. Ojonga gets it wide, one on one for the corner. The bad boy goes from the outhouse to the penthouse. Zero to hero. That man, Okio, who else would you expect to score the final try? Look at the Russian.